Now we know how to import images, put them into different uh, collections, create folders, move those images into other folders, use the navigator tab to uh, better examine our images, add keywords, label, rate, and all the other things we learned in the lesson so far. Now that we're done with this uh, library, we're going to move on to the next uh, thing, which is develop. As the name suggests, uh, in develop, we develop the image, we adjust the lighting, the color, we can crop, we can change the tone, we can do so many things uh, in the develop tab before we export the image. And um, right here we have some similar tabs like collections and navigators. These guys work the same as they would in the library. I'm going to start with the first image. It's loading the preview. Until it does, let's go over what these are. The navigator, like we mentioned, it's for better examining the image. You can zoom in, uh, check for any um, unwanted objects, check for coloring, the, if they're focused, any distracting elements, noise. And um, it's helpful to have this turned on whenever you're working with it. Again, you can change how zoomed in, it can go all the way in or come all the way out depending on how uh, zoomed in you want to be. Okay, let's change into fit. And uh, this is how I want my image to be while I look at it. After the navigator tab, let's close that off. We have the presets tab. Now presets is something we'll get on, uh, get to in a whole different lesson, whole different lecture actually, because there's so much you could do with presets. And I'm sure you've heard by now that uh, making presets on Lightroom is a, first of all, it's a very uh, popular market. You can see influencers or Instagrammers selling their own presets. And you might have wondered how you could do the same. And Lightroom already, and Lightroom already gives you a lot of presets. They're categorized based on portrait, style, color, black and white, and all that. And if you want a quick edit, you could just use the presets that Lightroom gives you. Let me choose this, for example. Uh, and you could even download more presets from Adobe or any other platform. And it will show up in here. Say if you open black and white, there's different uh, styles of black and white. You have black and white landscape. This is taking a while. We have black and white landscape. We have high contrast, punch, low contrast, and uh, other styles as well. Now what you could do is, let's say if I chose this, um, uh, preset and I want to make a few more adjustments I could just keep it on this and then go here and maybe I don't know make it brighter whatever it is that I want to do but uh, these presets are very well uh, uh, designed so a lot of times you won't be needing to make any further adjustment and with so many options, sometimes you won't even need to go onto the right panel to further develop the image. So here's a list of the um, presets. And there's a plus button here. Like I mentioned, you can add new presets from the ones you have downloaded off of uh, other websites. Make sure it's a credible website so you're not getting any viruses. You can manage your presets, create your own. And we'll get into those in another lecture. So let's close presets right now. And then we have snapshots. Snapshots are shots of different versions of an image that you create while you're developing. Difference between a preset and a snapshot is that you cannot use a snapshot on other images, but you can do that with presets. With presets are the adjustment, snapshot is the image with the adjustments. So I could come back to a version that I edited earlier by going on my snapshot. I can name it black and white, for example, instead of going through my history panel looking for the earlier versions. 
So you can click this to delete the selected snapshot. I don't really need this. Let's close that off. History uh, is basically the history of all the things you've done so far. So I've imported this image. I've uh, added a preset on. I've changed the presets a bunch of times. And I have added the exposure and it even tells me how far um, I've underexposed with the minus or overexposed or even reset the uh, adjustments. And everything I do to an image from the time I import it is going to show up here. The main difference between the history panel and the snapshot panel is that first of all you have to create the snapshot. But with the history panel you can go back with adjustments. I can go back to an adjustment I made earlier instead of continuously hitting Ctrl Z or uh, resetting my adjustments. I could just scroll down and find the adjustment that I wanted. So you can even delete or clear all of the history, but I recommend keeping it when you're just starting out just in case you messed up some things and you want to go back to where you started. Let's close history and collections is the same thing as it was in library. Right now we're in summer 2020. If I go in white, uh, there's going to be these two images that we imported in the start of the lessons. So let's go back here. And, and you could uh, copy a collection and paste them do the extra, uh, do further management here as well. So this is how you use the uh, left panel of Lightroom. In the next lesson, we'll talk about on how to use the right panel and how you could, uh, and how each of these uh, work and what they're meant for. And in the further lectures, we're going to learn how to edit uh, portraits, landscapes, and other forms of photography. And again, in another further lesson, we're going to learn the different styles of editing. So you could meet a perfect, uh, you could meet a certain style uh, of your choice by simply following the steps that I will walk you through. So this is it for this lesson. I will see you in the next one.